Hi, I'm Kathy with Level Up RN. In this episode of Ask a Nurse, I'll be answering your questions about swimmer's ear, such as what are the symptoms of swimmer's ear? How is swimmer's ear treated? And how can I prevent swimmer's ear? Swimmer's ear is an infection of the outer ear canal. The medical term for swimmer's ear is otitis externa. This is different than a middle ear infection, which is called otitis media. Swimmer's ear can be caused by a bacteria or fungi, but bacterial infections are more common. Most infections occur when water is trapped in the ear canal for a long time, which provides a moist environment for bacteria to grow and multiply. The most common bacteria that cause swimmer's ear include Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Staphylococcus aureus. As the name implies, swimming is a key risk factor for getting swimmer's ear. In fact, swimmers are five times more likely to get otitis externa as compared to non-swimmers. Other risk factors include living in a humid environment, having a skin condition such as psoriasis or eczema, and trauma to the ear canal. So trauma to the ear canal can occur when someone sticks an object in their ear to try and remove earwax, such as a cotton tip swab, pen, or paper clip. Symptoms of swimmer's ear include ear pain, which is often worse if you pull on the outer ear. Other symptoms include itchiness in the ear canal, redness and swelling, drainage from the ear, muffled hearing, and a feeling of fullness in the ear. In terms of diagnosis, your provider will review your symptoms and then examine your ear using an otoscope. In most cases, laboratory testing is not necessary. However, for recurrent or severe cases of swimmer's ear, your provider may remove a small sample of fluid from your ear and send it to the laboratory for analysis. Treatment of swimmer's ear typically includes antibiotic ear drops. In many cases, ear drops that contain an antibiotic and a steroid will be prescribed, such as ciprofloxacin and hydrocortisone. The antibiotic helps to kill or inhibit the growth of the bacteria, and the steroid helps to decrease inflammation. In most cases, your provider will recommend that you abstain from swimming while you're treating your infection with eardrops. In addition to eardrops, over-the-counter medications such as acetaminophen or ibuprofen can be used to help decrease the pain associated with swimmer's ear. For patients with severe swelling of the ear canal, an earwig may be placed to help the medication get deep into the ear canal and to help decrease swelling of the ear canal. In terms of prevention of swimmer's ear, it's important to keep the ears as dry as possible. So when swimming, things that can help include earplugs, custom fitted swim molds, and a tight fitting bathing cap. After swimming or showering, you want to dry the ears thoroughly with a towel. In addition, a hairdryer set on the lowest fan setting and the lowest heat setting can help dry the ears as well. Some providers recommend a half and half mixture of white vinegar and rubbing alcohol after swimming to help dry up excess moisture and prevent the growth of bacteria or fungi. However, this should not be used if you have ear tubes or a punctured eardrop. So definitely check with your provider first. And then last but not least, it is super important to never place objects inside your ear, which includes cotton tip swabs. That's it for this episode of Ask a Nurse. I hope it was helpful. If so, be sure to hit that like button, stay informed, and stay well.